Okay, it may not entirely be the Smash fan base's own unrealistic expectations that people are mad at Bayleth and Smash Brothers. I mean, people outside of the Smash community even were getting really mad at Bayleth. So, and they really didn't have any sort of expectations like the community did. So, I, there is some sort of like a little bit of like underlying, I think, truth somewhere in there. I mean, even Chris Raygun, who talks more politics now than games, he had, oh, oh my God. Oh my God. Dude, really? It's really, that's really fucking rude, dude. Come on. Now, I know I made a video already talking about this, but what really kind of made me change my mind was uh, this Twitter thread. Um, I forget the user's name, but I'll put a link to it in the description. And uh, it really sort of made me realize something I really, like, I knew in the back of my head, but, like, it just kind of made me reconsider sort of the relationship of everything between not just the Smash fan base's relationship with the Fire Emblem characters in the game, but also Nintendo's relationship with the Fire Emblem characters. And I don't want to make this about, you know, my roster purity, uh, a.k.a. Uh, I only want it to be legendary, iconic gaming characters. You know, I don't want it to be some flavor of the month bullshit of like whatever the most popular or newest game is. Because I do agree that I like my Smash Bros. characters to be more sort of long lasting. But to pretend like Smash has never always been like that, I think is kind of disingenuous. Like the only Smash game that I think you could ever argue was like pure, just iconic characters, was Smash 64. And even then, like at the time, you could argue it wasn't because Pokemon had come out a year prior and then Earthbound wasn't necessarily the cult classic in North America and Europe like it is today. So, eh. Now looking at all the Fire Emblem inclusions that we've had in Smash Brothers so far, like at least for some of them, I don't know, I don't know if it's just me personally, but it just feels like Nintendo is incredibly desperate when they include these Fire Emblem characters. And when I say desperation, what I mean by that is Nintendo, I think really, really wants people to like Fire Emblem. You know, please guys, please, Fire Emblem is so good, please, please like it. It feels like they want Fire Emblem to be this like beloved franchise right up there with Mario, Pokemon, Zelda, etc. Like I get that Nintendo's a more global company now than they used to be, even on like the Wii days when they refused to localize a high budget JRPG like Xenoblade Chronicles for America. Like I, I get like they want to expand their ambitions with all of their series everywhere, but it still doesn't answer the question of why Fire Emblem? Now maybe Nintendo realizes that they really badly messed up when they didn't localize any of the NES or SNES Fire Emblem games in the West. So maybe they think that because Fire Emblem in the West doesn't have as much legacy compared to something like Mario or Zelda, that they think that including more Fire Emblem characters in Smash Brothers would somehow compensate for this somehow. But Guys, that's not how that works. I know that Smash is obviously, you know, in its entirety is essentially just a marketing vehicle for Nintendo and third parties to push their stuff into the mainstream. But like, if you really just think about it, like if you really look at like the most transparently like marketing ploy characters that we've gotten in the series up to this point, like three out of four of the characters are Fire Emblem characters. I mean, good lord, just look at it, right? Like, Roy, the only reason he's in Smash is because Binding Blade was coming out, like, a year after Melee did in Japan. Corrin's game wasn't even out in North America and Europe when he got added, which is, like, the most obvious show thing imaginable. And then Bayleth, yeah, the game is already out, but it doesn't feel like it's had enough time to develop a sort of, like, sense of, like, this is a classic, you know, game with a legacy yet. I mean, the, the DLC hasn't even fucking finished yet. 
by the time Bayleth will be out. It also doesn't help that a lot of these shill picks don't come from good games. I mean, at least Bayleth comes from a good Fire Emblem game. Whereas Roy, he comes from like a meh game from what I understand. And uh, Corrin's games, like only one out of the three people like kind of like. So if you just look at it from a marketing perspective, whether or not the character is actually fun to play or not, but if you look at it from that angle, aside from Roy and Marth and Melee, getting people interested in Fire Emblem and then ultimately getting the series localized on the GBA, like outside of that, like characters like Corrin and really Bailith, whoever Nintendo thinks that this is a smart idea as a cross-promotional strategy, whether that's Masahiro Sakurai or somebody on the development team or somebody at Nintendo, they really should like rethink this strategy because like the casual Smash fan really doesn't care about the gaming brands or trying them out really. Like the reason why Smash Ultimate sells so well is because of casual players. So for them, like, having more Fire Emblem characters is not going to make them more likely to try out Fire Emblem. For them, it's essentially a bunch of toys in the toy box. Yeah, they might care about gaming series like Mario or Pokemon or Legend of Zelda, and then maybe a little bit below that in terms of popularity, but... Like I said, they're just toys for them to play with. And then you have, like, the moderate to hardcore Smash fans. You're not going to win them over either by putting more Fire Emblem characters in because there's already so many. And these people know that development time and tons of effort go into these characters. And so for them, they see it as essentially a waste that these characters are Fire Emblem characters. So by including more, you're just making people more and more angry that a different character that they want is not getting included in the game. And I understand that's not necessarily how game development works all the time, right? You know. Maybe we only would have had, you know, four DLC fighters for the first fighters pack if Nintendo didn't want to have Bayleth in the game, right? So we might have not just had another fighter if Nintendo didn't want to put Bayleth in. You know, the community perceives it like it's taking a slot. And so I, I don't think anybody at Nintendo is really helping make Fire Emblem any less hated by continually doing this. Maybe it's our fault, though. Maybe it's our fault for expecting, you know, Master Sakurai and his development teams to have perfectly chosen each time a character that would stay iconic throughout the decades, right? Like, maybe we're just being too harsh on him, you know? Maybe, you know, Corrin and Bayleth, you know, maybe those are really only the bad picks. You know, out of a roster of like 70 plus characters, that's a really good fucking ratio. Maybe we should just come to the realization that, you know, Masahiro Sakurai's decisions are, surprise, surprise, not perfect, obviously. And maybe we shouldn't just always sidestep at that by saying, you know, oh, it's his game, he can do what he wants. But maybe not be super angry about it when he doesn't make the perfect decision. So I hope that, you know, that Nintendo realizes a lot of the criticisms that I've stated here, and they won't make the same kind of mistake again, like they did with Bayleth. But at the same time, though, I have no expectations for Fighter VI. Like, it could entirely make up for sort of how a bit disappointing Bayleth is. It could be another Fire Emblem character for all I know, but hopefully, maybe if the next character isn't as disappointing as a Bayleth, but isn't exactly the most hype-shattering thing on the planet, maybe the community could take it a little bit better. So anyways, that's it, and uh, have a good day.